So for our new lesson, we are going to look at how we apply stoichiometry calculations to solve a limiting reactant problem. For example, if you are making sandwiches, you may need two slices of bread, a slice of tomato, a leaf of lettuce, one slice of cheese, and two slices of turkey. If you have six slices of bread, eight slices of tomato, 12 leaves of lettuce, four slices of cheese, and 20 slices of turkey, how many sandwiches can you make and why? Pause the video and write your answer in your notes. The limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first in a chemical equation. And because it runs out first, it limits how much product can be made. Think back to the snowman factory. You ran out of one inch disks first. And because you ran out of one inch disks, after that you couldn't make any more complete snowmen. So that was your limiting reactant. The same is true for a chemical equation. Whichever reactant runs out first limits how much product can be formed. So let's look at a sample problem. For this problem, we are given the balanced equation nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gases yield two ammonia gases. The question is how many moles of ammonia can be formed when three moles of nitrogen gas combine with 11 moles of hydrogen gas? We know this is a limiting reactant problem because we are given two numbers to start with three moles of nitrogen gas, and 11 moles of hydrogen gas. The way I solve these problems is I start with whatever is given to me first, so three moles of nitrogen gas. I make that my unknown. So I want to find how many moles of nitrogen gas are necessary when I use all 11 moles of hydrogen gas. And so that becomes my given. So I put 11 moles of hydrogen gas over 1. Now I want moles of hydrogen gas to cancel, so it has to go on the bottom of my next fraction. Here is where I use my mole ratio, which is what we've been doing for quite a while. I'm going to convert from the moles of what I'm given to the moles of what I'm looking for, or nitrogen gas. When I look up at my balanced equation, I see that there's a coefficient of 1 in front of nitrogen, so I have 1 mole of nitrogen gas, and I see a coefficient of 3 in front of hydrogen. So I have three moles of hydrogen gas. Moles of hydrogen gas cancels. And now to solve the problem, I take 11 divided by 3, and I get 3.7 moles of nitrogen gas. This is how much I need. If I look back in the problem, I see that if I need 3.7, I only have three moles. That means I do not have enough nitrogen gas. So my limiting reactant is going to be my nitrogen gas. So now I can go back and actually solve my problem. My problem is asking me to find how many moles of ammonia can be formed from 3 moles of nitrogen and 11 moles of hydrogen. Now that I know that my limiting reactant is nitrogen, I know that I'm going to start with 3 moles of nitrogen and I'm going to ignore the 11 moles of hydrogen gas. So I go back to start my problem with my unknown, how many moles of ammonia are present when I react all three moles of nitrogen gas. Again, I put my given over one, and I want moles of nitrogen to cancel, so that unit will go on the bottom of my next fraction. This is my mole ratio step, so I'm gonna put the moles of what I'm looking for, or moles of ammonia, on the top. Again, I get my numbers by looking back at my balanced chemical equation. The coefficient in front of nitrogen is one, so I have one mole of nitrogen, and the coefficient in front of ammonia is 2, so I have 2 moles of ammonia gas. Moles of nitrogen cancels, and to find my answer, I take 3 times 2, and I get 6 moles of ammonia, which can be produced in this reaction. You can also be asked how much of the excess reactant is left over. Well, if my limiting reactant is nitrogen, then my excess reactant must be my hydrogen. To solve this problem, I need to find out how much hydrogen is going to be used when I react all of the nitrogen that's provided in the equation. So I'm going to look for how many moles of hydrogen equals 3 moles of nitrogen. Again, I put what I'm given over 1. I want moles of nitrogen to cancel, so it has to go on the bottom of my next fraction. And again, this is my mole ratio, so I want the moles of what I'm looking for on the top. When I look at my balanced equation, I have one mole of nitrogen, and I have three moles of hydrogen. 
moles of nitrogen cancels, three times three gives me nine moles of hydrogen gas that are going to be used. If you'll recall from the previous slide, we were given 11 moles of hydrogen gas. So to find how many moles of hydrogen gas are left over, I take the 11 that I was provided, and I subtract the 9 that I'm going to use, and I find out that I have 2 moles of hydrogen gas left over at the end of my reaction. Now it's your turn to practice a problem. 2 potassium chlorides plus 3 oxygen gases yield 2 potassium chlorate. If you're given 5 moles of potassium chloride and 5 moles of oxygen, I want you to answer the following three questions. What is the limiting reactant? How many moles of potassium chlorate can be formed? And how much of the excess reactant is left over at the end of the reaction? Show all of your work for these problems at the bottom of your notes. You may submit your digital notes on Schoology, or your handwritten notes can be given to Mrs. Benke.